2014 through present day Dodge Ram 2500 ProMaster box man. We're going to be replacing the AC condenser and radiator fan assembly. I'm Brian Essick from How To Automotive. I'm a walkie step by step through the process of changing out the fans. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you the part numbers for this job. I will link it up in the description of the video. That way, if you need to pick it up, you can find that there. The first thing we need to do is get the fan out, and the fan assembly is behind the core support here. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the grill here, and it's just held on with a bunch of uh, T30 Torx bolts here across the top here. There's four of those going across the top. Then at the bottom of the grill, there's going to be a couple plastic screws right here. They're kind of like uh, plastic rivets, so you're going to remove the, uh, the screw and pull these clips out. Once you get these two clips pulled out, one on the left and one on the right side like this, they... now we're going to go back up to the top of the grill here, and we're going to lift the grill assembly upwards and towards you. You may feel a little pressure when you're doing this because there's a couple clips on the bottom of the grill that's mounted into the lower portion of the bumper. Now we're going to start working on removing this inner portion of the grill here. So it has a bunch of T30 Torx bolts holding it in, so that you just follow around the perimeter of the uh, grill here or the inner portion of the grill all the way down to the bottom. Then you'll follow it across and remove the fasteners down here at the bottom and then work your way up towards the top. And once you get these all removed, you're going to work your way towards the middle. So once you've got all these fasteners removed, then what we're going to do is go underneath the uh, bumper here and looking up vertical, there's going to be four more fasteners. So I'm starting on the driver's side and working my way across towards the uh, passenger side and removing the fasteners. There's four in total. Also on top of the bumper, there should be a fastener right here. Mine has some front end damage. You can see it here. It's kind of been pushed through or pulled through. You're going to remove the fastener there too. Once you get all those removed from the bottom and all around the perimeter, you can just lift this uh, portion upwards and towards you and it'll pop off. Now you can set this whole assembly aside for now. Now that we got this inner panel removed, we're going to start working on removing the core support here. And uh, the first thing I do is remove the, uh, the 13 millimeter bolt right here. And, uh, and we're going to go on the other side and remove the 13 millimeter bolt here. This is the uh, bracket holding the radiator and condenser assembly onto the core support. Go ahead and remove those two bolts. Now we're going to start removing the core support. There's three bolts on this side here, here, and then one in the, in the tunnel portion of it. So we'll remove these three bolts on the, on the core support on the uh, left and right side. Then we're going to start working on unbolting the, bo the bottle here. So there's a 13 millimeter bolt here you're going to remove. And then it's just pressed into these little grommets at the bottom. So once you remove the one bolt, you're going to lift the, uh, the bottle upwards. I also pulled this little vent hose out of this little mount to get a little slack. And we're just going to try to lift the bottle upwards. And once you get it popped out of the grommets, you're just going to push it backwards. We're just going to leave it there with all the hoses connected. Now we're going to make sure all these bolts are removed, including the ones in the little tunnel here on both left and right side. And then we're going to unscrew the uh, clamp here. And we're going to pull this charge pipe off right here so once you get it popped off like this you're going to lift the whole core support up we're going to leave the cables and everything attached to it and we're just going to flip it upwards like this and uh and tuck it back into the engine bay as far as we can and then i used the bungee cord to hold it in place i just wrapped it around the the hinge of the uh of the hood here and uh reattached it back to the uh, core support and that held it out of our way now we can see our fans here. The first thing we need to do is get these this hose here uh, popped out of these little catches. So you want to just use a flat blade screw, screwdriver or your fingers and pop these little catches open and pop that hose out. Now you can go ahead and take this vent hose and go ahead and pull it out and push it in towards the engine bay. So we need to get this wiring harness unplugged and detached from the fan shrouds itself. And uh, it's held on with a bunch of clips everywhere and they're really difficult to get in and out. So I'll show you a cool little trick to, uh, to get these all unplugged and get this all unattached. So what we're going to do is get a few things unplugged and a few of the hoses disconnected from the fan shroud here. And then we're going to pull, disconnect the uh, fan shroud from the radiator and we're going to lift it up. And it's got plenty of slack here in the wiring harness. So as we lift it up, we can start getting to the clips and, and make it a little easier on ourselves to get it out. So if you look on the side of the radiator right here on the side of the fan, is where the uh, clip is that holds the fan shroud in. So we're going to have to press this little clip inwards and then we can pull the fan shroud upwards and it'll uh, come un unattached. And you need to do the same thing for the uh, uh, driver's side here, but it's underneath the radiator hose here. It's a little harder to see. So you'll push that in 
and then you'll lift the fan upwards. And as we get the fan lifted upwards, we can get to the wiring harness and unplug everything. We're also going to disconnect the upper radiator hose, so you're going to need a bucket on to catch any coolant that's going to come out. Only a few ounces are going to come out. So this is how I got to those tabs. I used a flat blade screwdriver like this. I reached around back, and then I put the tip on there and just give it a light little push, and then that allowed you to, to uh, pull the fan upwards and get the fan to pop out of its catches right here. So we're going to do that for both the left and right side. So I left the radiator hose on for now because I'm, what I'm going to do is use the uh, radiator hose to help pry against that little tab. So I slide the screwdriver down like this and use the lip of the radiator hose and, and give it a light little pry. And that pushes the tab in. Now I can reach over and pull the fan upwards and pop it out of its mount. Now that we got the fan popped out of its mounts and kind of we can pull it upwards a little bit and now that allows us to get to the back of the, uh, the clips here from, un from the back side and uh, squeeze the little tabs and pull the uh, wire loom holders off. Okay, so to get the uh, fans up and pulled up where we can work on it, we need to get the rest of this uh, feed hose from the coolant reservoir bottle out. So we're going to follow it down and we're going to open up the little catches. So we're, it's actually easier to go from underneath the vehicle looking up towards the fan. And, uh, and disconnect the uh, two connectors. As you can see, I'm from the, uh, in front of the AC compressor here looking up towards the fan. So we're gonna get this hose out of all the little catches. I just used a flat blade screwdriver to pop those open. Once I got that done, I uh, put a bucket under there. We're gonna pop the upper radiator hose out. So to get that upper radiator hose off, we need to uh, pop this little clip out. I used a hook tool, pulled the clip outwards like this, and then I used a flat blade screwdriver or a, um, or a pry bar and gave it a little pry right there and wiggled and pulled at the same time and that popped the hose off. As long as you don't take the radiator cap off the reservoir, you're only going to lose an ounce or two so you're just going to push it out of your way for now. Now you can start lifting the condenser fan assembly upwards. You have to be careful for the little catch right here or on the vent line so you have to wiggle the fan shroud left and right and you have to flex it inwards to clear the radiator neck and once you get it upwards and sitting on top of the radiator neck now you can go through the back side and you can get to all those clips holding the wire loom on with needle nose pliers and now we can get in here and uh, start unplugging all the uh, all the wiring harness so the hardest part is getting the wire loom holders to re re release so that's how I did it was uh, reached around the back side with needle nose pliers and I just uh, follow them around and just uh, I unattached them from the uh, fan shroud and as I start getting slack in the uh, uh, wiring harness and getting more and more things disconnected we can start lifting the fan upwards and out of the vehicle and then eventually we can get it where it's sitting out on top of the uh, frame so as I got some slack I was able to lift the fan all the way out and set it on top of the core supporter on top of the radiator here like this now I can get over here and I can finish disconnecting all the hoses this fan on the uh, driver side has this little uh, connector or a clip you have to slide upwards and then once you slide it upwards then you can squeeze the tab and unplug it. So now you're just going to completely remove the wiring harness from the uh, the fan shroud assembly now we can take the fan off. Now with our old fan and our new fan sitting side by side we need to make sure that there's no clips or anything that we need to transfer over from the old fan onto the new one. So this new fan did not come with the, uh, the, the clips that held the hoses on so we need to uh, make sure that we have all those transferred over. Once we're satisfied that everything is transferred over, now we can take the uh, the new fan assembly. We can lower it down into the vehicle, and that this is where you're going to take a little patience, and it, you want to kind of work the uh, fan in you left and right, and kind of just work slow increments. And if you notice, I did not plug the wiring harness back into the fan. Uh, the reason why is it's easy to plug things in. It's hard to disconnect them, so I. So I left them off while I fed the fan down into position. So I lowered the fan all the way in and clipped it into the four clips, the two on the left and the two on the right, until it locked into place. So as you can see, it's fully mounted onto the radiator in the two catches on the left and the two catches on the right, and it's locked into place now. Now we can flip the wiring harness back into position and plug everything in, all the ballast resistors, the fans, the, uh, the relays, and then the wire loom holders clip those all back into their little spots. So like I said, it was pretty easy just to plug everything back in. So once you get all the wire looms reconnected to all their connectors and the wire loom holder plugged in, 
The next thing we're going to do is take this vent hose and go ahead and put that back into its mounting uh, spots on top of the radiator right here. And then we're going to work on getting this hose back into its mounting clips. So I'm going to go back underneath the vehicle and we're going to clip those all back into place. So you want to make sure you get them all clipped in. Once you get the hose all clipped back into its mounts, we're going to go back up top and we're going to plug in the radiator, uh, upper radiator hose. So you're going to push that clip inwards and what I like to do is take a little bit of liquid dish soap and put it on the seal of the uh, hose here and that lubricates it and helps it uh, go on nice and easy. So you'll line it up with the radiator and like what I do is put one hand here and with the other hand there and push the, uh, the radiator and the hose together until it clicks. Then you want to make sure you give it a good tug to make sure that that hose is not going to pop back off. Now we're going to take the core support here and flip it back into position. So I removed the bungee cord. The first thing we need to do is hook up the charge part pipe here. Once you have that connected, then you can position the core support over the frame here. To get the core support into position, I need to I had to flare the bumper a little bit just like this to get it tucked underneath. I also had to pull the radiator forward a little bit so the, the mount here didn't get caught underneath it. And then it dropped down into position. So now that it's dropped down into position, you go ahead and start the three bolts here on the side. And then you can go on the other side here and start the three bolts here and tighten those all up. Now you can put the bolts for the radiator bracket into the end. You may have to slide the radiator bracket up or down to get the uh, bolt to line up with the uh, original hole. So go ahead and start those 13 millimeter bolts and tighten those down. Now we're going to take the uh, charge pipe, make sure that's uh, secure with the clamp. And then we're going to put the bottle back into the little rubber grommets right here and start the 13 millimeter bolt. Once that's all started, we can take our inner grill piece here and mount it back onto the uh, bumper here. So you'll just line it up with all the tabs. Once you have it installed onto the, uh, onto the grill here, then I take the, all the fasteners and I like to start them all by hand. Just start them all a few threads and then uh, that way you can wiggle it left or right. And uh, So you're going to go all the way around the perimeter and the four on the bottom. Go ahead and start all those, then you can tighten them all down. Then we're going to take the grill here and hook these clips here in the bottom of the, uh, of the bumper here. They'll clip into there. So we'll line those up and so you'll line them up by pushing it down into them and then you push the grill inwards and once you get the grill push in you can start the four bolts on top and tighten those down and then the two clips that were underneath here you can go ahead and start those and resecure those on the left and right side. Now that that's done we can go ahead and top off our coolant. We only lost an ounce or two as you can see here in the bottle. Go ahead and top that off a of Mopar approved uh, coolant and uh, once that's topped off, then what we're going to do is start the vehicle and operate the, uh, the AC and make sure the cooling fans operate. You'll also want to run the vehicle with the AC off until the thermostat opens up and the cooling fans run. I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. That way, if you need to pick up any of those, you can find those links there. And if you're interested in supporting the How To Automotive YouTube channel, I sell t-shirts and stickers and coffee mugs. There will be a link for that stuff in the description of the video also. I'm Brian Nessa from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos. Encourage you to subscribe. Invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.